So it's the height of summer, the height of the tennis season. It's Wimbledon. It's the time of year that people love to talk about tennis and love to trade it. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Please like and comment on the video below. That will allow me to produce better quality videos and more of them in the future. So the characteristic of the grass surface on tennis is that the ball has a very low bounce and it's a very fast surface, which makes the serve very dominant. When you get good servers like John Isner, uh, they tend to dominate the game with their serve. If you look back a few years ago, we had this classic game at Wimbledon that ended on 138 games in the final set between Isner and Mahout that was dominated by serve. They kept winning one service game after another and they just couldn't be broken. And that's the characteristic that you tend to get at Wimbledon. It's very hard to break serve at Wimbledon simply because of the speed of serve and how important the serve is, how dominant it is within that entire game. So to give you a clue, if you can win uh, on serve 60% of the time, then you'll win a game about 80% of the time. So if we look at clay, for example, you may find that you could probably only win a point 55% of the time in the women's game, for example. That would only lead you to win the overall game itself 60 odd percent of the time. But if we go to a Wimbledon and you're able to win a point on serve maybe 70% of the time, that gives you a near 90% chance of actually going on to win the entire game. The serve is very dominant and if you can get those first serves in with a decent amount of speed you stand a really good chance of winning the game. So the main characteristic at Wimbledon is the service. It's very easy to win a service game, very hard to break serve and therefore when a serve is broken the movement that you see in the market is absolutely huge. So rather than just know that fact I went off and researched it and looked at the chance of winning a point on serve. So what we're talking about is the player throws up the ball, smashes the ball, he may get an ace, he may have to uh, carry on playing a game for a few more shots, but what is the chance of a player winning a point on serve? So I looked at the male averages on grass and it's 65.3% of serves actually go on to create a point on average. So of course, some will be above that, some will be below it. It's 58% for women players. Now, if you look at clay, that's only 60% for men and 53% for women. But the benefit of that is that obviously, if you get that first serve in, um, or you're able to get a decent serve in, you've got a much, much higher chance of winning the game. And that's the dominant characteristic at Wimbledon. Now there's a difference between male and female players, but it's still the same. You get a big hitting women player and that will significantly influence the outcome of the event. So also look at the taller players as well. Um, if you look at uh, some of the players that have a very long reach, they can get the ball down over the net just that little bit faster, which will become much more dominant. But yeah, very significant impact at Wimbledon. So if we take that 65% chance of getting that first serve in and going on to win a point, then you can actually translate that into the chance of a break possibly occurring. So the interesting thing is, if a, a player is serving and wins a point on serve 65% of the time, that actually translates to about an 83.5% chance of going on to win the game. So if they can maintain that level, look at the stats when the stats come up on the screen, and you can see that they're serving and getting a point on serve about 65% of the, the time, that tells you that they've got a, about an 83% chance of winning the game. Now, the interesting thing about that is it will, be, it will take at least four games on serve before the chance of them getting broken is about equal to the chance of them winning the game. So you can see that's very, very late in the set. And of course, very late in the set, um, if a break occurs, that will significantly alter the outcome of the set. So obviously the chance of an ace at Wimbledon is very high because of the dominance of the serve. But the interesting thing when I looked at the stats was that an ace is actually worth more than one point. I know that sounds a bit weird, but what tends to happen when a player serves an ace is they tend to be a little bit more bullish on their next serve. And that very often leads to two easy points once a player has served an ace. Really odd statistic that came out of all the data I was looking at, but it's completely true. An ace is worth more than a point. So the interesting thing about looking at a tournament like Wimbledon is actually you sort of almost err on the side of a server being able to, to win their particular game. And the chance of a break is actually um, significant when it occurs, but sort of less likely to occur. But the interesting thing about the individual situation within a game is that when a player is a point down on serve or maybe two points down that move can be quite significant much more significant than you've seen in some of the other tennis tournaments so if you've taken a position on a player to be able to get a break of serve and they actually go a point or two up it very often makes sense during a tournament like Wimbledon on grass 
to trade out at that particular point and not wait until the end of the game. So whenever you're looking for a break of serve and tennis, the way to do it is you need to take a position at a point in the market when the odds are very low or where there's less chance of downside within the market. And then what you're saying is, I think there's going to be a break in the next four games, the next five, the next six. At Wimbledon, you need to be looking at a minimum of four games for that break to occur, uh, because that's about the rate at which it begins to even out. And then you'll basically say, I'm going to lay at this particular point. I'm looking for a break of serve. You're waiting for the break of serve to occur. And hopefully it does. And then you can trade out for a profit. However, if you get to the point that you've predefined within that particular trade and it, the break doesn't occur, then you're going to have to trade out. If you want to figure out where those key points are, all you need to do is go into Bet Angel, click on the tennis ball, that will bring up Tennis Trader and that will give you all of the stats that are going to occur within the match. You can look at them by game and by set, or you can even put your own custom score on there. So you pitch your position into the market, you say, I think a break's going to occur within this set number of games, and then you trade out for a profit or loss when that actually happens. And if you want to know what the chance of that happening, the odds that the market's going to be at that particular point, then look at Tennis Trader and it will tell you. And like I've said, when you're in the middle of a game and perhaps it looks like he's got the opportunity to break, the market will probably shift enough for you to trade out for a profit. And of course, there will always be more break points within a match than actual breaks of serves. So that's your opportunity to trade out. So one of the unusual things I found when I was researching Wimbledon and looking at all of the detailed stats was there was something really odd coming back at me repeatedly. And that was when a player was 40 love up on serve, they tended to really go for that serve. They were going to try and ace it. They were going to try and crush their opponent. But the funny thing that happened in reverse is when they were love 40 down, or it looked like they were about to be broken, they actually slowed down their serve. Now, of course, really at that point, you've got nothing to lose, so you may as well serve at full speed. But what I actually discovered was that players served at their weakest when they were love 40 down which doesn't make any particular sense. It must be a psychological issue. Obviously, they want to get the ball in, but the problem is if you serve slower, then you've got more chance of losing that point. So it's a curious bit of psychology that goes into the minds of players when they're playing at Wimbledon, that when they're love 40 down, they serve much, much slower than when they're 40 love up. When in fact, from an expectancy perspective, they should keep on banging those balls down there as much as, as possible because they've got a fair chance of winning that point at Wimbledon but they don't. It's a really interesting statistic that came up when I was looking at all of the data. The interesting thing about that particular statistic, that players tend to serve uh, slower when they're under pressure, is that you see it across the entire game. So if they're a point down, they tend to serve slower than if they're a point up, or the, the actual game is tied at that particular point. And if they're two points down, that's much slower than if they're a point down. And if they're three points down, it's even slower, and it goes into reverse in the other area. So when a player has served a couple of good shots, they're likely to serve even harder on that third one. But as their confidence drips away, if they've perhaps double faulted or perhaps just lost a point, they tend to slow their serve down, which gives their opponent the ability to attack. So bear that in mind when you're trading at Wimbledon. So Wimbledon is a really interesting tournament to trade. It doesn't trade like any of the others. Breaks of serve tend to occur less frequently, but when they do occur, they will be significant. The serve is incredibly dominant. That's a key characteristic of the game. I actually think that it detracts a bit from the tennis because when you see players playing on clay, that can be quite entertaining. Whereas at Wimbledon, it can just be a case of two guys slogging it out repeatedly. So yeah, look for that break of serve. Understand that it's going to be really significant at Wimbledon, but also understand that it's a bit harder to find than at other tournaments.